Hi, this is Bern Sargas, president of OSU, and we're here for another edition of Inside OSU. And this one's a little unusual because I get to do the interviewing of the interviewer. And uh, with me today is Chandler Rogers. Chandler, hello. Hi. Uh, tell, uh, tell us you know, you're graduating, I understand. I'm graduating in May, yes. I'm a senior getting my degree in multimedia journalism, finished my minor in Spanish, and I'm not ready to leave yet, but. And uh, you're from Enid. Yes, sir. That's great. And uh, we are, it, it, you've, we were talking before the show, you've already sent out your demo tape. We've said you're starting to look for a job in television, right? Yes, I started that today. Yep, I'm looking for a reporting job. It's very nerve wracking. So but you, you'd, be, you'd be that guy out at the, in the morning here and uh, broadcasting from the interstate, showing all the ice. And yeah, with the, the, the rain sideways. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. You know, we are, you, of course, you've been here now four years. Is that yes, right? Sir. Well, that, ma that makes your folks happy. You, you made it in four yes, years. Yes, yep. <laughs> but we're in a beautiful new studio here, aren't we? Oh, my gosh. It's incredible. I'm so impressed with this. I'm really sad to leave it because I, I wish I had more time to spend at this set because it, it really is state of the art. It, it mimics a, a actual new set that we that I will be going to, right. you know, in a, in a real job. So. Yeah, we actually dedicated this facility or cut the ribbon on it la last week. And uh, we have a, a, a new set, which actually uh, Griffin Communications uh, mm -hmm. donated to us, which is great. Uh, wh what do you hope to do in the news business? I would like to report, um, anchor report, something like that. Um, I've really focused on um, doing broadcast, so um, shooting, editing, being in front of the camera, writing. I I've had so much fun. This is this is the major to be in for sure. It's fun and, and interesting. So you learned a lot. I did. A lot of practical Absolutely, skills. Absolutely, yeah. Well, and you got to use some of those the other day during research week when you interviewed uh, none other than Ira Flato. Yes, sir. Well, tell us about that. Uh, was that your first interview of a world-renowned scientist? It was, yeah. It was my first time to interview someone of that caliber, for sure. Um, well, do, why don't you explain to our viewers exactly who uh, Ira Flato is? Ira Flato is um, PRI's host of... Um, Science Friday, and so he hosts this radio show that really, I, I mean, it has a huge audience, huge audience, and they talk about science, and anyone that's interested tunes in. I mean, they have like two million listeners. It's it's crazy. Did you listen to the the actual broadcast or, or podcasts of it or something to get ready? Uh, yes, I, I listened to a few of his podcasts um, before the interview, but for this interview, Google was my best friend. Um, that's really how I prepared to- A lot to easier to research these days. Yes, yeah. So I learned everything I needed to know about him um, really before the interview. So of course I was nervous, but he was so nice and very interesting and um, really easy to talk to, so. Well, Chandler, let's, uh, and, and viewers, let's look at a few clips of your interview with Ira Flato, and then you can watch the entire interview on O-State TV. A lot of people are interested in science, and that's part of your keynote address here at OSU. You're focusing on patents and how anyone can really come up with some strange ideas, good ideas, some science. Right. So tell me a little bit about your keynote address that you're giving. But, uh, you don't have to really be, as I say, a genius. All you have to do is think carefully, come up with an idea, and you pursue it, and you can get your own patent. You know, people are pretty smart. This is kind of a, a tedious process going through all of these patents and finding truly interesting ones. So what got you into that? I'm a geek. I mean, I really I like, I like studying patents. I like studying inventions. I was one of these kids uh, in the, who went into, went, went into your basement and blew things up and, you know, worked with chemistry sets. Um, I used to repair TVs, all kinds of electronic things. I was really one of these geeky guys with the pocket protector and the pens. And, there have been a lot of things in the media that have sur been surrounding science topics. Right. The Big Bang Theory, all these movies. Um, why do you think that is? Why do you think that the media and entertainment is, is taking a turn for science as entertainment? People are really naturally interested in science. You know, when you're a kid, you're born a natural scientist. You try to do experiments with stuff you see, and that gets you into trouble. Back in the day when I was a kid, you'd try to put a Pop-Tart into the VCR because it was a slide. It looked like it fit, you know? And you get your hand slapped. But, but people started out, we all started out as very curious natural scientists. The 
question is what happens to you later in life? You know, we may give up on that or you may continue it. And so it's, it's not surprising now that we're seeing science popping up in the entertainment world. The Big Bang Theory, other kinds of TV shows, they're on The Simpsons, there are all kinds of different segments all over the place. Um, and look at all the movies we have now with science in them. We've had, what, two Academy Award nominees this year, for Alan Turing and Stephen Hawking. We've had Gravity, we've had um, other movies about science. So what do you expect to see from, from students in the near future as far as science goes, research, development? There's so much we don't know. There's so much we don't know about how the world works. Here we think we're in the 21st century and we're really smart people and we've come, you know, come through all these eras of great science. But look around you, look around everything in this room, look around everything that you can see. Everything that you can see and touch is only 4% of the universe. We don't know what 96% of the universe is made out of. It's made out of some spooky dark stuff, you know, dark energy, dark matter, and we don't know where that comes from or what it's made out of. It's a prime example of, you know, of, of a frontier to study. So that was a great job. Thank you I so much. I think you've got a big future in this business. Well, thank you. I look forward to watching your career develop. Uh, but back to our Plato, what, tell me, uh, I mean, he's a very interesting character, isn't he? Uh, what, what, what were you surprised about, or what uh, did you find really interesting? Well, I was surprised that he admitted that he was a self-proclaimed geek, <laughs> um, but he said that he really got super interested in scientists, science as a child, um, and he said that everyone is really born an, a natural scientist. You know, you start digging in the dirt, you're making mud pies, you're exploring, and really that's what he said is the basis of science. And so he, his keynote address was really about anyone can be a scientist. Anyone can come up with a patent as long as you're passionate about it and pursue it. Anyone can do it, you just need an idea. You know, we've got a, uh, a, a Creativity World Forum that's gonna be in Oklahoma City on March 31st, and the whole theory of the Organization of Creative Oklahoma is that we all are very creative. It's just that, believe it or not, school can sometimes suck the last drop of creativity out of you because there's only one answer. And so you can't be uh, this free thinker that you are as a kid building mud pies or, or whatever it may be. So I think he's right about that. Except maybe in my case. <laughs> but uh, I, uh, I know everybody will enjoy the interview. I think Research Week is a wonderful way for us to showcase what, what OSU does uh, to serve its state and the nation and the world. And I think this upcoming Creativity Forum, I think it's on March 31st. So you might want to come down there. There might be some good, uh, good interviews that yeah, you can that do. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, fantastic. Well, this has been a great inaugural interview of an interviewer. Uh, of inside OSU, but uh, Chandler, you did a great job. I've really enjoyed talking to you. And Thank you so much. Good luck and go Pokes. Go Pokes. All right. <laughs> well, that's another edition of Inside OSU. We'll see you next time.